All right, welcome back to uh, What the Puck Podcast with Justin. Yeah, Justin, thanks for coming on the pod. No, my no problem, man. It's my pleasure. I know we've been yeah. talking about doing this for a while now, so now we yes. uh, were able to do this. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, just I, I mean, I know from I'm from Boston, but I still got a love for the Montreal Canadiens with Patrick Waugh. So, I mean, please tell me how you just became. Ah, nice. <laughs> I mean, like I got the. There you go. <laughs> um, just w- where's your love for the Canadian start? Honestly, it probably started off back in I would say the early nineties. Um, my parents would go away on vacation, and I'd be staying with my grandparents. And um, my grandfather was really big on watching the uh, watching the Habs and. Uh, uh, I remember, like, basically having to sleep on the couch, right? So that's where I used to sleep when I'd step my grandparents when my parents were away. So, of course, the Habs would be on. So I was kind of, like, into watching the Habs starting that. And uh, uh, um, favorite player growing up was none other than 33, Patrick Waugh. Um, right. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. Funny story, though. Definitely. Like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get into something early that was kind of probably predates my time as being a Habs fan, but it will kind of lead to that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, basically I, I do have fond memories of, uh, watching the 93 Stanley Cup finals, um, where, uh, especially with the legal stick with Marty McSorley and, uh, uh, I remember watching out Eric Desjardins scoring though, the, the hat trick in overtime, uh, to win that game that was crucial for that series. Uh, and then of course remembering, uh, you know, the 93 Cup final, watching it with my grandfather, who's no longer with us. Uh, but uh, I remember uh, that's basically where it all started for me anyway. So. Was that the year that um, uh, Rawa had the um, – I'm sorry, Wa. My wife likes to correct yeah. me. Wa. He had the uh, appendicitis. And that then was he in 94. Came... So it was 94. Okay. 94. 94. So I remember that series very well as well. So – uh, 94. I remember I was I was really dialed into that one. I remember at one to seven games. I remember uh, game six. Um, Ron Tugnut goes in for Montreal because Wall had the appendicitis, and I'm like, no, because Montreal's up three two in the series. Boston then ties it, and then they end up winning game seven. I remember I'm like, oh man, if he doesn't have that appendicitis, I think Montreal goes and wins that round just with the way he was playing, nice. having that sixty. Was it 63 save performance against Boston overtime where I think Muller scored the winner? Right. Oh. Joe Muller. Was Joe Muller or Bob? Oh, Muller? man. Oh. Pardon? Was it Joe or was it Bob Muller? Oh, it was Kirk Muller. It was Kirk Muller. Oh, wow. You got a <laughs> jersey from him, too. <laughs> Jeez. I uh yeah I, I remember that it was a long time ago I remember the appendicitis because my cousin Katie had appendicitis the same time. Well, that's crazy. So that's how I always remember it. Yeah. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> well, and the thing too is the crazy with Wall was his 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 compete level, like just that one to be in the net, and then all he wanted to get that medical clearance to go in the net, and the doctors, well, he's he's medically cleared to play. <laughs> But it was one of those, like, I don't know if the average Joe would want to go through that, right? But no, man, he right. just w- always wanted to compete. And uh, that's one thing I love about Patty Wall was exactly that, was just his willingness to be in that crease no matter what. Yeah, he's a tough SOB. Now he's with the Islanders. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no kidding, eh? And I think, I think he's going to make a big difference in that organization for sure. Definitely. Definitely. So, um... I, I, you know, you just, you, you impressed me because I do see the videos on Twitter. I've talked to you before. You're an e-bug. Can you talk yeah. more about that? I think that's so impressive. Yeah. So basically, um, I, I, I'm part of the EOSHL, which is the Eastern Ontario Super Hockey League, which is pretty much semi-pro hockey up here. Uh, a lot of really good, talented hockey players. Uh, I mainly work for the Frontenac Phantoms, which, you know, and we our color scheme is very much it's orange and black and uh looks a little bit like the Philadelphia Flyers a little yeah, bit. I know. Um know. so we, we have a yeah, we, we have a very deep pool pool of uh goaltenders and uh basically I'm like number four, number five on the chart. 
Uh, I, I honestly, I always tell the guys, I'm like, you know what, if I have to go in that net, that's, you know, like I'm like, I'll never want to be in net over somebody else because I'm like, man, I do not want to mess anything up. <laughs> I'll be in there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just the insurance policy. I did have to dress for one game last year where we, we only had something like nine skaters go up to um, the league champions of Barn, which is the North Dundas Rockets. They have a bunch of like AHL, ECHL players, some former pros in there. Um, and I remember that was on a night of like a really big blizzard and, uh, we, oh, so you uh, got the snow going. Around. So you're the e-bug oh, and the snow's going. I'm e-bug. Yeah. So I, I was on the bench <laughs> dressed and, and of course our starter, uh, Jake meant he's, uh, he had a junior career up with the North State Battalion, phenomenal goaltender. I'm surprised he didn't go pro, but he's, he's just so calm. Reminds me, reminds me a lot of, um, Carrey Price and a lot of his movements really? and everything. Wow. And, um, and and, and, and anyway, I remember being, uh, yeah, he, he was phenomenal, like just a phenomenal goalie. And I remember being on the bench in that game and my toes turned purple because of how cold it was. Cause it was, it was about minus 35 Celsius, which, Jeez. uh, I don't know what would be in Fahrenheit, but freezing. It's cold. And then, it's well, anyway, cold. Yeah. So, and you could see your breath in the, in the arena. Like it was probably the coldest arena I've ever been in. Uh, and uh, by the end of the game, my water bottle was solid, like rock solid ice. Oh. I had never had that happen to me before, ever. Yeah, same here. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah. So that that's kind of like my start of being an e-bug on the you know on the bench there. Uh, I generally do game day operations for my hockey team, so that includes like getting the arena set up for the games. Uh, I take care of uh, the creating the atmosphere for the for the games. So like I, I I've spent countless months and hours on uh, a soundboard creating like that really unique hockey experience not like going to a game and people are playing thunderstruck and back in black like the generic stuff i really like going with the deep cut for people are like really bobbing their heads and really having a good time uh, i even go as deep as getting like authentic organ music for the games um even like you know before the puck drop you know the are you ready you know all of that stuff like I, I really like to go dig deep in that and people really dig it i get compliments from all the other teams that come in saying like this is the best place to play because it's like you really feel like you're in the show you know uh I mean, the other thing easy. i do as well oh it's great like the other thing i i uh, like to do as well uh, i also do the videography for the uh, league as well so uh, I do post production because a lot of the uh, connections in the buildings are garbage. So I record the games, I take the footage home, and then edit it, put the scoreboard up, put goal graphics in there, period summaries, everything. So it makes it look like it's an authentic uh, broadcast that you'd watch an NHL game kind of thing. Jeez, uh, wow. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, guys really dig it, uh, and uh, I have a play-by-play -play guy too. He sounds a lot like Bob Cole. Uh, from like, Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> Just how he happens to sound, but he also like idolizes Bob Cole and Harry Neal as well. Uh, and uh, basically, he's he just brings the whole game to life, and his son actually does the uh, the video work uh, most of the time for us. And uh, he's, he's just a kid in high school and getting his uh, hours in for volunteer work because uh, over here in um, Ontario, you have to do like so many hours of community service to graduate. Uh, really? basically to, to, to go towards the community. So, uh, he's doing that for us and it's just been, he's, oh, he's top notch at following the play. Oh, it's been great. And, um, I actually just recently won a community award as the best videographer in the area, uh, for my coverage of the, wow, congrats, the hockey league. So, congrats. thanks, thanks. <laughs> uh, and so basically yesterday we actually had a, a huge game that we won in overtime. Uh, we played against uh, one of the top teams in our league, actually the Tweed Oil Kings. And, uh, um, uh, we've never beat that team before. And, uh, we actually ended up having a, a Toronto Maple Leafs lead up on this team four to one. And, uh, and and I'm referring that to the Boston lead, uh, the the lead against Boston in 2013. 2013, <laughs> right? Yeah, Bergeron's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bergeron's overtime winner. Uh, yep. So anyway, we Castle ended up actually was on the, the Leafs. I remember. Oh, I remember that too well. Oh yeah, James Reimer so, so and Gold. Leafs. Oh yeah, uh, oh, that was monumental. And I say that because I was like, we were up four to one, and then they they came back and creeped back and tied the game. We then went up by by one five four. They tied it. Then they went ahead 
we tied it in the, after we pulled our goalie, and then we won it less than a minute in overtime. So it was yeah. just a very fun mm-hmm. back and forth game, and it's just a big character <clears throat> game for our uh, our team. And uh, I, I still have goosebumps because it was just such a fun game to be part of. Um, and yeah, it's just overall like this hockey. It's, it's great hockey. Um, you know, it brings communities together. I mean, we're not talking like NHL arenas, but like some of these teams will will pack anywhere between like 700 to 1,000 fans in their building. And we're talking about like community buildings, right? Like those community buildings, when they have 1,000 people in there, it feels like everybody's around you. It's right. just, oh, it's, it's just, it's electric. That's awesome. Um, that's, that's so good to hear. Oh, I, I, I love it. I love stories. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's actually, unbelievable. It's, it's, and I actually, uh, I actually suited up yesterday for warmups, actually, with the guys because we were taking our team photo. So we had four goalies in our uh, in our team photo, yes. and uh, I took some shots and warm up. And of course, the coaches, you know, because I'll, I'll get to my nickname, but it's like, "Hey, tuna, get in net, you know, go do go do the breakout drill." And of course, like I get in the net, and they stop the breakout drill, and they just start firing pucks on me like nonstop. And I'm like, I don't even know what, what to do at this point. <laughs> It's just like, I'm just like, just trying to put my arms everywhere. And I'm like, everything's going by. And I'm like, I'm just going to stand here and just let whatever hit me, hit me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have this this nickname uh, in the league called uh, Tuna or Big Tuna. Uh, and in some, guy, in some cases, guys will call me uh, Big Shiny Tunes or Big Shi- or, or uh, DJ Tuna. DJ anyway, Tuna. There's, there's a whole joke. Yeah, so there's a whole like joke behind it because in training camp, I, I train with the team, I practice with the team. Uh, during training camp, I uh, ended up um, actually uh, like it was our first like real practice. It wasn't like a scrimmage or anything. That was our first real practice for like doing breakout drills. And they were intense, but they weren't very well synchronized. So, of course, some, some guys on one side were going faster than the other side. So, of course, you make a save on one side. Next thing you know, you have someone on the other side. And you don't have any time to recover and get up. Mm-hmm. And so about – and the big mistake I made was <laughs> two hours before the skate, uh, I made myself one of those tuna, tuna salad wraps. And uh, I started feeling really sick on the ice. So, I had to, like, <laughs> get out of the net. <laughs> I, luckily, I didn't like curl all over the ice, but I started feeling flushed. And guys were like, "We thought we were gonna have to take you to the hospital because you were white as a ghost." And uh, so, anyway, afterwards, I ended up finishing the practice. We did a scrimmage. I ended fine afterwards. So, like after in the dressing room, um, we have this guy on our on our roster by the name of Danny Taylor. I don't know if you know that name, but he uh, he's played. Uh, he's actually was a former NHL goalie, um, but playing defense now. And he comes in with a big smile on his face, and he's like, "Hey, how are you feeling there, Big Tuna?" And everybody <laughs> just starts, starts lo- loving it, right? And I loved it too, because like I don't know, it's kind of funny, but I love The Office. I don't know if you watch The Office, but I'm big uh, Jim. Never Hellert seen fan. the episode. No, so you gotta watch it. So th- that's also a nickname in the show as well. So it kind of goes. So I played against the team. I played against a team in beer league, and um, what's the package in? The packaging company, the green logo. Oh, do you mean like like what it cost to, for the for the jerseys and stuff like that? No, I'm saying what was their um the the company they worked for in the office. Oh, 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 sorry, my bad, I misunderstood you. Oh, it's Dunder Mifflin. So the yes, Dunder Mifflin I'm team. Company. That's what they were called, and I never understood what that team was called. I'm like, is this a real company? And then I had to Google it, oh, no, and no. it was, oh, okay, it's an office reference. I've actually, oh, I mean, so good. I know, I'm late to the game. I'm more into, like, Breaking Bad and all that stuff. Oh, I've I never seen that show. I watched that show, too. <laughs> oh, Breaking Bad was fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, overall, um, overall, like, so Danny Taylor, actually, he's a right now. Uh, so he, he played, um, he's played only about three NHL games in his career. He was drafted by the Kings back in 2000, uh, 2004. But he was in a bad situation. So drafted by the Kings in 04. And you got to think, 2005, the Kings then draft Jonathan Quick. 2006, they draft Jonathan Bernier. Jeez, wow. <laughs> then he's in a tough spot. Oh, God, with him. And he ends up, yeah, and then, then he ends up going over to... Um, Toronto. Then he, ends up actually, then he ends up going to Calgary. And then he plays, uh, plays a little bit for Calgary. Uh, oh, and, of course, he's backing up Mika Kippersoff. Uh, 
And then he goes and pl- then he, he basically has some like tryout stints and so on. He's a good goalie. He is uh, just, you know, we're talking about like eras where, you know, you have some of the greatest, you know, most athletic goalies there are. Uh, but then he ends up going to the Ottawa Senators uh, and he ends up like finishing his career uh, playing a game for the Senators against the Bruins, actually. And he actually has a highlight of him making a big stop on David Pasternak and uh, Petri Bergeron. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and I'll say this, though, as a Montreal fan, like, I know it's, it's, we're supposed to hate the Bruins, but it's, it's funny, but I don't hate the Bruins. I actually have a tremendous amount of respect for them. And I think that comes a lot from Ray Bork and, uh, and Patrice Bergeron. Um, yeah. I'm huge, huge, huge fans of both of those guys, Bobby Orr, um, and, you know, I was a big Andy Moog fan, too. Uh, when he came to the Habs for that one season, I thought that was uh, that was kind of cool, yeah. too. Because, like, you know, you heard of, like, you know, Petrois, Andy Moog, Ed Belfort. You know, like, those those eras of goalies. And it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Andy Moog gets to play a play year in Montreal. Uh, but, yeah, going back to um, what I was saying there. So, he, he, he had a stint playing against uh, the Bruins there and then called it a career. Uh, he played a little bit in the KHL. Uh, so, uh, he, he then, like, basically... Came over to uh, like our team as a defenseman. First time ever playing out as a non-goalie. That's um, crazy. That's and, crazy. And and like the way that he started, he had this bow-legged look, kind of like stride, like a, as a goalie would, right? <laughs> and but as the season got went on, he actually got better and better and better, and just played a physical game. And like looking at him, he's not a big guy, but he just knew how to how to see the ice differently. And I asked him. Like what? What is like the like? What's the difference here? And he's like, he's like, you, you, you like as a defenseman, like you're you're really focused on your assignment and like reading. It's kind of like similar to goaltending, but like in a faster in a faster way, where it's like everything you do is going to affect the play down the ice. So as a goalie, you're reading the play that's happening, and you have time to kind of predict what's going to happen. But on defense, it's it's a lot faster. So he said it definitely took some time to adjust. Um, he's no longer with our team, actually. So uh, he actually uh, left our team in favor of getting a job with the Pittsburgh Penguins as a goalie oh, uh, <laughs> scout. So, uh, he, uh, yeah, very good for him. So what happened was uh, with Pittsburgh, uh, with Pittsburgh, uh, there's a, a guy out here by the name of Jay Clement who I think had a stint in the NHL at some point and uh, I he's a nice to them. Yeah. So anyway, um, when Kyle Dubas got hired over in Pittsburgh, he basically had a, a meeting with the, you know, the brass of the scouts and whoever showed up kept their job and whoever didn't was fired. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so just McClement came in and said, Hey, I got this guy, you know, you probably know him. <laughs> and uh, he, he basically uh, brought Danny on and Danny's been a scout with Pittsburgh Penguins. So uh, I thought that was kind of pretty cool. So, Which is funny because uh, the the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins are owned by the owner of the Red Sox. That's right. That's true. Yeah. So there's a Boston connection right, right, so right there. Yeah, the, Fenway, Sox, the, Fenway connection. the Red Sox suck because, you know, John Henry, he's the owner. He's putting all the money into the Penguins and he owns a soccer team out in um, somewhere in England. So he's putting all that money there. So I'm not a baseball guy. I can care less about baseball, but I mean, the Red Sox suck, but I mean, you know, he's pumping. And I think he wants to put a team somewhere. I think Seattle basketball. No, no, no. Oh, basketball. I would be surprised. Seattle, it's it's Seattle, like, especially the way that the Kraken are going right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be pushing to have another major league sports team because i know they had the, the sonics there the super sonic years ago they have them. yeah they're gone they didn't work out but yeah. but like some teams they like sometimes like that that point in time it doesn't work out but you know maybe later on like look at like let's say um the winnipeg jets for instance not say the winnipeg jets didn't have a, a fan base it was just the economy at the time was garbage and the canadian dollar here was terrible it wasn't due right. to a lack of support but um and speaking no, of they're like, one of the best teams in the league, <laughs> the Jets. Yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping too. I'm hoping too. We get a team back in Quebec City. Uh, that would be really great for rivalry for hockey in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, I remember watching some really great rivalries there. Oh yeah, I and, remember. And that's that. Quebec, Quebec had some great rivalries with other teams in the uh, in the conference too. I don't know how it was with like Boston, but 
I know like they had some pretty good rivalries with like Toronto and, and, and Hartford. Hartford's another one too that, you know, uh, you know, I all too well. Those jerseys. Oh man, that, those nineties teams were just, those jerseys are just timeless. I mean, the whole league, Paul <laughs> Coffee, Brendan Shanahan, all those oh, like man. Hartford Whalers. Like it was uh, Glenn Wesley who was on the Bruins that oh, got yeah. traded. I mean, yeah. it, and, and, Crazy. Beak was on there too. Like, no, yeah, so oh my too, god, right? I haven't heard that name in years. <laughs> Pat for Beak. Uh, Beak. Pat wow, Pat for Beak's nephew plays in the league that uh, the fandoms play, and he's actually one of the top scorers in the league. He's phenomenal. He still plays, uh, just you know, uh, not Pat, but his nephew, his nephew, oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan played for the Kingston Frontenacs. Good hockey players, very good hockey. No players. shit, no shit. Um, well, he's, he's just, in the family. Just, yeah, and he had a, he had a he had a PTO with Tampa Bay years back, but you know he's he's, he's playing senior hockey now, so. <laughs> yeah, <that's not> good. <laughs> uh, but but you know, like I said, it's great hockey. It's really great hockey. Now uh, there was something I, I, I want to mention too, like part of like my fandom with Montreal Canadiens. So like I remember I was saying I I had some that predated my my fandom with the Montreal Canadiens. So back in about I would say about 1987, 1988. Um, there was uh, a meet and greet. And my, my brother and sister were kind of hockey fans, I guess. Um, so Patrick Waugh was doing a, a meet and greet at, at one of like the local banks. And uh, so I was about two and a half years old. But, so I got Jeez. to meet Patrick Waugh when I was like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a photo of it too. So I, I, get, to, I get to say that too. So Patrick Waugh, that, that kind of predates my... My Montreal Canadiens fandom a little bit, I guess, led me to him being my favorite, my favorite uh, goaltender growing up. Um, and then, of course, another cool fact about Patrick Waugh, or I should say not about Patrick Waugh in general, but my fandom with Montreal is I got to work a few seasons at the Bell Center in Montreal. Uh, I got to do. Uh, got to wow. Do- yeah, I got to do some uh, some pretty cool cool stuff. I got to work at the Montreal All Star Game, the Centennial celebrations, all those jersey retirements, awesome. like Patrick Waugh's jersey retirement, uh, the NHL draft. Uh, I got to work at all that stuff. Got to witness Carey Price's first NHL shutout against Philly. Uh, it was it was phenomenal. It was just a great time to be a, a Habs fan and just working in that building when I lived up there. Um, I grew up in Montreal, of course. I don't live there anymore, but um, you know, I basically was one of those guys that would serve behind the counter the beer and their food. And then eventually I switched over to working in the private boxes, like serving like the owner's boxes and the alumni and all that stuff. It was just, it was phenomenal. Just a, a I incredible like experience. You worked way up. You that's see, unbelievable. That, that, that's what and, I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. And then of course, like you get to see legends like Guy Lafleur, Henri Richard, uh, Bob Gainey, um, you know, occasionally you'll see Chris Nyland, uh, you know, like and, and Knuckles. Yeah, Roxbury <laughs> native. <laughs> oh man, he's such he's such a beauty. Actually, I I Knuckles? saw him not too long ago. Oh Knuckles. Oh man, he's so good. Uh even even though like, you know, he's a Boston guy, eh? Like he he um he actually it was funny. He posted something the other day. He was like, showed a map of, of Montreal and then showed a map of Boston. He's like Map of Montreal, streets going like this, and then map, map of Boston, all the streets are kind of going all over the place. It's like, Boston, because fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Trust me. Trust me. I know. And, That's but, too funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, like, Montreal, Montreal for me, like, it's just been, uh, it's been a treat, like, just being able to do all that stuff, right? And, and uh, you know, as you can see, I'm a very big Carey Price supporter now. I've even got the... <laughs> The wow! Tattoo on the arm. Yeah, that, that's I got the dedication right there. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Carrie's been uh, Carrie for me has been kind of up there with Wa too, and I think I you know with Wa getting traded back when ninety uh, sorry and in, in the end of ninety five, um, you know that really broke my heart a lot, and you know I'm going to Colorado. I still. I still cheered for him. You don't cheer against Patrick. Of course. Law. Yeah. Um, so, but like he wasn't playing for Montreal anymore. Right. So like, I only got to really enjoy Patrick Waugh's career for like maybe a, a, a brief three and a half, four years, maybe before that whole trade happened. Right. So 
uh, for me, Carey Price, like getting to enjoy his career as a rookie all the way till, you know, the, that Stanley Cup final run and then that little brief return from, you know, his, his uh, injury and the mental health stuff. Um, yeah. I really had a big appreciation for that guy. I have met him a few times too. Really nice guy, stand up. And, uh, you know, as you said, I've got three signed jerseys up here, uh, you know. Um, oh, that's beautiful. They're all framed and everything. The one on the door. The one on the door is in frame, but eventually yeah. it, it will be. Uh, so it's, you, got it's Gallagher. Special... you got Shea you Weber? Got Gallagher. That Shea Weber, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, going to say, Weber. let's have a six. Uh, nice. Nice. I also have one signed by PK as well. Um, and I don't know if you see uh, up on the wall right here, like there's a little, there's a frame there. And above that, there's a hockey stick. Um, so there's a hot, that hockey stick belonged to uh, Boston Bruins public enemy number one at one point. <laughs> yeah. Dale Weiss. Damn. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the, that, I think that's Dale's like final game use stick that he used in the NHL before he called it quits too. So, and he might have been hurt in years. Wow. You're really uh, uh, scraping it with me. Like, you're bringing oh, in man, that yeah, Boston, I, Montreal. And you know what? That's the well, best rivalry in sports. I, I don't think anybody it, nothing says. Beats it. Nothing beats it. I mean, like, there's some good ones out there, you know, in other sports like Boston and, 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 and the Yankees. But when it comes to, like, nice. Boston, Montreal, hands on. Even, even if Boston's up here, Montreal's down here, or vice versa, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. The game's always going to have that intensity in it. And it's like you would never think one of those teams is at the bottom of the standings. Ever exactly, and that, exactly. that's. I mean, sometimes you'll have those lopsided games. But sometimes you need those because then you'll get the, you know, you'll get the real like playoff kind of feel hockey. You know, uh, not not with the score, but like just with the intensity and some of the rougher stuff that happens behind the scenes. Uh, but you know, and 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 again, I'm I don't care what anybody says. And you know, I might get ripped on it, but like Brad Marshine, I love the guy. I think he's phenomenal. I would I would take him in a heartbeat on my team. And my wife, every time we, every time my wife sees him on the screen, she's like, holy crap, his nose is huge. <laughs> like, did you know that guy can smell hot, that guy can smell hot dogs from up in the, up in the nosebleeds? <laughs> and you know what? I don't think he would disagree with you. <laughs> no, no. But no, no I, like, I, I, I absolutely respect, love and respect what that guy does. Um, he's a rat. He's a he knows he's a rat. It's like, he you're is, the best. He's a phenomenal hockey player. You know, like, I think he's I slowing think, down uh, a lot of people. I think a lot of people will like overshadow the fact that like, yeah, he, he plays on the edge, but God, man, the guy can score goals and he can play the game in a, a very um, dominating way. And you don't see that in a lot of guys. It's a very like dying breed. Now you're starting to know it's like, you're not really seeing that anymore. Uh, you know, I know Toronto is trying really hard to try and get that sandpaper in the lineup. Getting Ryan and Reeves, but like Reeves is, Sure, a guy can fight, but what else can the guy do? You know, um, that's the tough part. Oh, I hear you. Oh, <laughs> did you have the kids hey, calling you? Put her to sleep. I'm sorry, Justin. No worries, buddy. All right, go to bed. Hi. All right, go to bed. Hey, Daddy. It's bedtime. Go Good to bed. Night. I'm busy. Good night. Unbelievable. You shut the door, please. Thank you. Sorry, well, my wrist <laughs> My guy, are you a big Manny Fernandez fan? Wow, jeez, Manny Fernandez. Okay, can I tell you a true story? Yeah, sure. My father, I quit hockey, and it's a long story. I should do this in a podcast one day. I quit hockey. When Manny Fernandez was traded to the uh, Bruins, my father said to me, how does it feel that a Fernandez, because my last name is Fernandez, but with an S. Manny Fernandez is with a Z. So my father's like, my late father, rest in peace, he was like, how does it feel that the, the, uh, Fernandez is on the Bruins? And I just was like, I died inside. I'm like, shit. So um, I know this is kind of sad. I don't mean to, you know, be that guy. But the last thing I said to my dad when he was dying of cancer, I said, I'm sorry for quitting hockey. He's like, it's okay. So as far as Manny Fernandez, I saw him play once. He played against the Buffalo Sabres and uh, Vernek. Um, was that Vernek? He played for the Sabres, right? He was um, the hot guy right at that moment. And um, the Bruins won 2-1. to one. Chuck Kobasu got the opening goal. 
And uh, I think Andrew Ferns might have got another goal. So they ended up winning two to one. I was with my buddy Dave. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was. Um, that's all I remember. I'm going to forget Ferenc. that. Good old Andrew Ferns is that. <laughs> That goal against I didn't like Andy, Fer Andy Ferentz was the biggest fucking fraud, okay? He was such a turnaround king. He gets the puck at the red line, he just turned around. Uh, he sucked. He was overrated. He sucked. <laughs> Him, Ray like Campbell, overrated. <laughs> That's just me, though. You know, you know, you're, you know you're passionate, but your team wins. <laughs> uh, I know, listen, um... everybody, I love Andrew Ferentz. I love, I'm like, the guy sucks. No, Chara would barrel him out. And I love Chara. Actually, actually, funny story. So I was up in, uh, I think it was like 2011. I, I got tickets to Montreal, Boston. And it was my first time going to see a Montreal, Boston game. And I remember Boston was up in that game, one nothing, all game, all game. And it got to the final minute. We, we pulled Carey Price. And then uh, we had the extra attacker out. And basically, Montreal gets the puck on the, uh, you know, on the sideboards and throws it towards that. Tim Thomas is in that, actually. You know who throws the puck on net and scores? And it's the flukiest goal. Scott Gomez. I don't know how many games I've been, been to in Montreal where Scott Gomez actually scored, but it's actually quite a bunch. <laughs> so Scott Gomez scores. The game goes to overtime. And then... Uh, Shortly after, Montreal actually wins the game in overtime. Max Pacioretty scores the goal, and then he does that little infamous stuff at the channel, right? And then it causes that little scrum there in the corner, and that led to a whole I remember like. That. I remember that game. Yeah. But I will say this as a Montreal fan: I don't think Chara had any intention on trying to break Max Pacioretty's neck. The worst thing of that play was it was an interference call. That's it. I don't think there was any intent to try and kill the guy. I think that's all it was. It was just trying to rub him out on the board, and it just happened to be a very bad result of a hockey loss. play gone bad. Um, it and, the so fast. Like, and the fans calling nine one one like that was just an embarrassing moment <laughs> as a fan base. Like, what are you doing? Uh, so, but uh, like overall, like I, 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 I've always. Um, there's just something about those kinds of guys like Chara, Marchand, uh, you know, Bergeron, always respect those guys. Uh, Chara too, especially Chara, like, I don't, Chara's never had really a mean bone in his body. He's a big guy. Sure, he's fought, yeah, I remember he fought Vinny LeCavalier, that was, that was incredible. Um, and I remember actually, he had Vinny LeCavalier once down on the ice and had his fist up and just held up because he could have knocked him right out. Le Cavalier was actually the one who engaged him to fight. I don't know if you remember this, but I, I have a tremendous respect for that guy. Seeing him finishing those marathons. And then I remember there was one time where a Montreal player, I think, took a puck to the face or something. And then, like, down on the ice, bleeding, and Chara's there, like, making sure he's okay. And I'm like, this guy, like, this guy gets a lot more hate than, than you know, he really, you know, he doesn't deserve any of that. And But the thing, too, is you got to remember, in Montreal, if you get booed when you have a puck, the puck on your stick, that's kind of like a cheer, right? In a way, like you gotta think about it, right? Like mm, when you're sure. booed in Montreal, it's it's a badge of honor, right? Like they booed Bedard, but it's like people are like well, that's so classless. I'm like, no, 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 no. In Montreal, you take that as a cheer. You take that as that you're a good hockey player. They boo McDavid. They boo they they boo the best players in the world because of how good they are. And it's not not something to disrespect them. It's just what Montreal does. Um, I'm not one of the play they, heck, heck, they, heck, they even booed Yamir Yager every time he touched the puck, <laughs> you know, like years and, and, and it doesn't go away. Like I remember like when Joe Thornton played in Boston, I remember he got booed so badly. Uh, but when he went to San Jose, I think it kind of, cause there's not really much of a rivalry with San Jose, yeah. but, but you know, Joe Thornton's another guy too, you know, like. Uh, I remember, like, he was a hated guy when, like, by Montreal fans. I remember, like, there was... Really? There was... I don't know why it was. It's because he was good, I guess. You know, like, obviously won a heart trophy. Uh, you know? That's about it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, man, like, some of the best hockey I've watched is those Montreal-Boston playoff series. Like, it never disappoints. Like, for me, like, that, that 2011 series 
where it went seven games and Nathan Horton scores the winner. That crazy. was such a crazy series. That's a like Montreal lost that series. That was fine. It was just that year was so big for Terry for because that was the year right after Halak gets traded, and he had a lot to prove. He had 38 wins that year, and he just played monster hockey. And he had he had basically had to prove a lot of those haters wrong, right? I mean, like that's kind of the big thing in Montreal. Goalies are always under the spotlight. Montreal's always been lucky with getting good goalies. Ted like, Dryden and after, Patrick Law. I mean, I can just Patrick understand. Law, like Jose, Jose Theodore. Like, I, I mean, Theodore had those two or three years of flash and a pen, and then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. He kind of went off, had some really bad he years. He made and money. He made money. He's like, I'm good. He made money, yeah. And then, uh, you know, Cristobal Huey, he was a good one, ah, too. He was a French killer. killer. <laughs> oh man, he was a brewing killer. I remember every time we play, we'd get a shutout. And it was like he was unbelievable. Wow. He was and unbelievable. He got oh, he was. He really was. And then after he got traded to Washington and Chicago, he wasn't the same goalie afterwards, you know? Um it's funny though, like how sometimes these these GMs can kind of foresee, you know, what what uh, nobody else can see, right? Like they'll treat trade them at their peak. Like the whole Halak price. Uh, debate. You know, everyone's like, oh, we still have stands. We're like, we should have kept Halak. We'd have a Stanley Cup by now. Look, look, no disrespect to Halak. The guy's played on how many teams now? He's found some really good 27. teams. Boston included. So, right, well, Rangers, yeah, Boston, St. Louis. Boston included. Uh, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Was he, was, he on, uh, was he on the team with Tuca? Was he on the team he was, that? he was. So that yeah, he was the he backup was. to Tuca during the uh, Stanley Cup final yeah, in 2019. Right. He's a good, he's a good support goalie. I wouldn't say like he's that kind of goalie you're going to be playing 60, 70 games. He's a guy you're going to want to play many 30 to 35 to 40 games, yeah, like a one A one B, like like in in New York, right? And now he's. I don't know. I don't think he's playing anywhere. He had a PTO with Carolina, but I don't think that's uh, right now, I don't know. He played in New York last season, and now he's. I don't yeah. know where he goes now. Yeah, yeah. He had a PTO with Carolina, but that didn't end but up. But he's pushing uh, like forty. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and like he's not. Yeah, he's not a bad goalie. He's just he's he's not. Uh, he's a solid. He's a solid veteran goalie you want to have if your starter goes down that can fill in the the shoes, right? Like he did a great job with New York. Great tasting gear. Great. <laughs> Great job with the Islanders, St. Louis. Right. Everyone yeah, he's gone, he's done well. A but but you're he's not Carey Price. And no, I know <laughs> I know a lot of I know a lot of people I'm like, well, Carey Price was injury prone. I'm like, he was. Don't get me wrong. Like there's no doubt that injury with Chris Kreider, if that doesn't happen, you really wonder what what would have happened with his career if he would have stayed healthy. I mean, heck, that Stanley Cup final run was just phenomenal. I, like, that was peak price, and I don't think I've ever seen him play at that level before. Like, e- every time playoffs came around, it was like another dial. Just It just went up just a little bit. It, was just, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about how that guy played and just how calm he was. And that was such right. little movement to get across. And just – it was like poetry on ice as a goalie. You just got to respect it and love it. It's like, for me, like, my, my – uh, like, during this – particular era i'm like there's three goalies that come to mind when i think of like great goalies of this generation or previous generation i should say now which is making me feel a little old now but you know you think of you think you think of you think of uh henrik lundquist and you think of carrie price and i mean no disrespect to jonathan quick either jonathan quick is pretty good as well um i mean all like i say four strikes four four of those goals Phenomenal. Like, those are the ones that come to mind when I think of, like, guys who really knew how to shut the door, right? And, I mean, unfortunately for Lundqvist and Price, no Stanley Cup. Yeah, um, I know. They deserve one. I mean, it, it's unbelievable they, yeah. how they have a won one. The other thing, too, is when you look at when you look at the history of the Montreal Canadiens, you look at all the retired jerseys in the, in the stands, right? They have more than any other team in the league. I mean, there's no doubt. You know, like, they've been around since 1909. You're going to have some... Mm-hmm. They're the fucking team to beat. <laughs> but the thing is, you get the problem is when you're in Montreal, if you don't have a French last name and you don't win a Stanley Cup, fans are going to bury you like crazy. So there's this big debate on two sides like, is Terry Price uh, worthy of the Hall of Fame? And is he also worthy of having his jersey retired? There's that big debate. 
I'm like, one, he's a Hall of Fame goalie, no doubt. You know, he's right. he's won at every single level that he's been at. He just didn't win that cup. But look at the the level of players that he's had in Montreal. He's had one 80-point player in the course of his career, and that was in his rookie season, Alex Kovalev. 84 Russian, points. Right? That was, Russian, right? <laughs> that's it. And and then when you look at other goalies, you look at like for instance, um, like for instance, some of these goalies who win the cup, like look in, in Colorado when they won um, Darcy Kemper. Look at this, like Kemper to me is not like a star star goalie. He's a nobody. He's 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 a fringe starter, you know. And and he's like the team look, in front of him. Still, the team in front exactly. of him won the cup. Exactly. He just happened to stop <laughs> extra points. Exactly and. I mean, also you look at Boston too. Boston had a good team, but but they were a really well rounded team. Like really well rounded. I think when you have the best rounded teams are, are the best teams to watch because like you're gonna depend on your goaltending too on some nights too, right? And like Tuka Rath for me, um, you know, there was that, that period where Rath really struggled against Montreal and then he got over that hump and just was unreal. Struggling. He uh, should have sat for Montreal every time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what though I always love that matchup with Price versus Rask because those were just it was poetry on ice and you never you never want to see either of them give up a bad goal ever you know and um, I'll try not to remember Rask, those games because those games sucked Rask got his he got oh, undressed they lose yeah. 3-1 to one, and it was like what the fuck it was just a lob puck from the blue line it oh. Went, oh it went in see Tuka Rask oh. is a good goal he's a good Regular season goalie. He yeah, sucks. Then come, the playoffs. Playoffs. then come playoffs, you got to depend more on, on your, your supporting cast around you a little bit more too, right? He I, like, I, know, I know I know when they went to the finals, like too, he had some pretty good some good games yeah. in there as well. And like yeah, I try not to remember those finals. Uh, I don't I, <laughs> that that's a bad memory. Because you know what? Here's the thing. I was down in Aruba and I was on vacation with the wife, right? And I had to find an illegal stream on my tablet and watching the game. And the Bruins were up. I think it was like 11 to like 3. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to come back to Boston. We got the cup coming. We got the parade coming. Fuck yeah. And they fucking lose it in seven games. And I was in a bar in Salem, Massachusetts with my brother and my, well, now brother's ex-wife and um they lost and i was so embarrassed and i, I just this is a pre-covid by the way and i just yeah, oh yeah. God, it was disgusting but anyways <laughs> you know what i got mad respect for the Montreal canadians because i feel like that was the best rivalry in sports so you kind of like you hate watch i love patrick Wah, but at the oh, same yeah. time because you, you're a fucking canadian but it's like i still want to be like you so exactly, right? like it's, just, it's 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 and that's the thing too is like Boston's a is an organization of class as well. Like it's it's just mm-hmm. when you look at those original class. six franchises. Well, I'd say about <laughs> five five of the six original five of the six original six teams are pretty classy for the most part. I'm not yeah. gonna put shade on who it is, but I think you get my drift. Um, I get a lot of Overall, no, like nice. my. my so, like, for me, like, I've only been to, let's see, how many NHL arenas have I been? To? I've been to three. I've only been to three. So I've been to, obviously, Montreal. Actually, four, if you count the Montreal Forum. We can count it. A couple games. Montreal Forum, the Bell Center. Uh, and then I've been to a game uh, in Ottawa. Ottawa, I'll get into the atmosphere there. And then uh, I've been to a game in Jersey, actually. Really? And, uh, yeah. Of <laughs> yeah, so... So I'll, I'll break down. Uh, I'll break break down uh, the, the the couple there, and and that you know that maybe not too familiar with. But Ottawa, Ottawa is an interesting building because all the people in Ottawa complain about the location of the building. It's just outside Ottawa. The parking does suck. Don't get me wrong; it does suck, and then getting on the highway is a nightmare. But for me, I'm in Kingston, so I'm in between. Uh, like I'm right smack in the middle of between Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa, right? So if I want to go see an NHL game, whoever's playing Ottawa, I can go, and it's going to take me maybe a couple hours max to, you know, get there, and then you know, a couple hours to get back. It's not bad, and and like tickets wise, Ottawa is a really good place to go see a game. Atmosphere wise, 
it, it it's really mediocre really, really mediocre it's very like it's not like anywhere i've seen a game be, like i've seen like you know been in different arenas and junior and whatever it really is flat and i don't know if it's the fans are just not engaged it's 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 not it's almost like it feels like the the atmosphere is forced and it 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 doesn't really? it's almost like it's almost like they're trying to be because I, I don't know if it's because they're right near the Quebec border. I almost feel like they try to force themselves to be like, try to be like the Habs, but fans are just not as passionate about their their fan, like their, their franchise. I don't know what it is. Like I went to a game in Ottawa to go see Nashville play the Senators. And uh, I, I want to go see UC Saros because I'm a big fan of that guy. He's not a very big yeah. goalie. Like I'm not a big goalie. And he's, I just love the way that guy plays and go see Philip Forsberg. And oh, his Roman commercial was and... hilarious, by the way. Have you seen his commercial? Oh. No, no, I didn't. I uh, stopped I, I, stop. I was uh, dying. I, I'll just get out. <laughs> but I'll tell you, like, there was probably about 50% Nashville fans in the building. Nashville. Nashville, yeah. The fans Nashville. It's a little embarrassing. But... And, and then, of course, you know, you go to Jersey. Jersey was a fun arena. Like, Jersey had just, uh, like, their building was fun. Like, it was just, the atmosphere was great. You know, you have the New Jersey Devil, you know, with his drum banging. And, uh, and of course, like, I was there, it was uh, 2011. Montreal was there. Uh, they, uh, it, it was during that, like, before they played Boston in the playoffs, um, and of course, I got messages on my phone. Oh, we just saw you on TV. Are you in Jersey? Because I was sitting, I was sitting about fifteen rows from the ice, and the tickets were not expensive. So, like, I went up there with uh, some friends, and we went up to New York City, and we ended up getting going to New York City on a bus uh, and a hotel. It was a hundred and like it was, it was like a hundred and twenty bucks to do that. Right, take the bus there, take the bus back, see three attractions. And include your hotel. It was dirt cheap because we were so many people. The tickets for the game were 130 bucks, and I'm talking Canadian here, so 130 bucks. So like, the game itself was almost it's as much as, as doing everything, but 130 bucks to sit 15 rows from from the ice and be straight and straight line, like straight sight of like everything was phenomenal. Uh, you know, you see T.K. Subban, Terry Price, uh, you know, doing their triple O five, which I actually have a photograph signed by both of them hanging on my wall. You can't see it, but it's there. Uh, from that game. Um, wow. And, uh, you capture the moment. Jeez. Oh yeah. But like the building was electric. Mind you, this is during the era when Ilya Kovalchuk was there and devils weren't doing so well. So the building was probably three quarters Montreal fans. But the atmosphere in the building itself was great. The lighting was great. Um, the Devils fans were great too. Like it was like going to the game. The game experience was was fantastic. And I think that's where a lot of it gets lost in lost in as well. It's like it's the game experience, like outside the arena, inside the arena, like everything that's leading up to it. There's just there was that buzz in the air, you know. Whereas in Ottawa, there's not really much of a buzz. It's very flat. Uh, whereas if you go to Montreal, you know, there's that buzz in the air. Everybody's wearing their hats, jerseys. Everybody's like really pumped to go to the game. You know, people are talking hockey. Uh, and that's what you like yeah. to see, right? In a hockey market. Ottawa, just, I just feel like it's a little bit forced. You know, like you'll see people wearing Ottawa jerseys, but it's like, it's almost like they don't really have very much pride wearing it. Uh, my, my, this yeah, the nation's it's, capital. Damn. Yeah, I know. It's, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to like shame Ottawa fans. It's just, it, I just, you know, like well, you're a straight I mean, city. A, Tell me how it is. So, if I were to go up to Ottawa, that's what I gotta expect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's and that's okay. You know, like and and, and I I know they're in that transition right now of ownership getting changed and all that stuff. And that ownership has a lot to do with everything, right? Like whatever you have at the top of your helm, running your stuff. Um, you know, willing to spend money on your franchise, on your fan base, that goes such a long way. And, you know, you look at teams like Boston, Montreal, like it packs the arena and, and it, it, it shows, right? You're like when you see Hockey Night in Canada showing in Boston, you see fans that are wearing their stuff proudly with their face painted. And, you know, it's just, that's how hockey should be, you know, like uh, hockey is so unique in that way, right? And, uh, you know, I love that. I love that. Hockey and, is so unique. That's great. I love it, man. I absolutely yeah. love it. And, 
you know, I like I I've, I've been very very fortunate to to be around the game the way that I have, right? Like I don't take it for granted at all, you know, like yeah. uh working in hockey. Like this year I'll be honest, yeah. I haven't been as much yeah. I haven't been in I haven't, I mean, I haven't you, been you must hockey. be a good goalie though. I mean, you, you, I'm not to cut you off, but I mean like this team goes, "Oh, we like Justin. We will have him with the e-bug." Like I didn't have any well, fucking it kind, of, like it kind of it kind of fell into a weird place because during so I'm not gonna lie. I I started. I'm only five foot five. I'm not very big. But, so, what's that mean? So, <laughs> well, so I basically the thing is I um it was always a dream of mine to be a goalie, right? Like watching Patrick right. and and you know all these phenomenal nice. goalies. And the thing right. was, I grew up with my dad. My dad uh my dad worked as a personal support worker in like the elderly homes and stuff like that. And um my mom my mom lived up in California uh for six years. Uh, so she lived up in San Jose Shark Country. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, I I was never able to actually. Um, we, we were never able, able to really afford to put me into hockey, and of course, with the cost of it, it's really expensive. Registration fees, equipment, all that stuff. Uh, so I only started playing on ice uh, nine years ago, or or going on nine years ago. Wow. Uh, so. So my first set of pads that I um, that I actually uh, got uh, were from a buddy of mine actually. Um, no, I, I was playing ball hockey. You know, sorry, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed up here. No, my first set of pads were CCM E Flex, uh, the E Flex series, Jeez, the E Flex okay, one. Date you and, and they were like they, <laughs> they were also they were also the the uh, like the ones like Carey Price wore too. The problem was I didn't measure properly, so I got pads that were two inches too big for me. So of course, like when I'm going to five hole, it's like what the fuck? <laughs> you know, the pads are just <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I got cheese pads like that too. I did okay though. Um, I, it's just basically you're just learning the craft and learning about your. They, I'm still trying to like tweak different things, right? Especially now I just got new trues, right? Trues are just a completely different breed. Uh, and so anyway, I've I've only played i played in a in a handful of like men's leagues and and so on and so forth i played in a queen's university um alumni tournament and so i ended up playing something like what was it like five four or five games over a span of two days and uh Jeez. i actually end up having like the event organizer come up to me and it's like our goalie just bailed on us. Can you fill in for us for a game? And I'm like, <laughs> all right, cool. Been so there. I go into this game. I go into this game and I'm playing like with guys who probably have never skated in their life. We got, we got outshot something like 87 to seven. And uh, we lost the game 10, nothing. And um, I have the referees Damn. coming up to me. I have the other team coming up to me and they're like, holy crap, dude, you're putting on a clinic. Like, don't look at the score. Like, that's not you at all. Like, I'm like, I wasn't beaten really badly. Like, it was just like, you know, you make the first two or three saves and then you get beaten. It's like, how how many do you have to make until you like, you know? <laughs> so, and I yeah. think I have to say about five of our seven shots were all shots that were just fired out for icing, right? So, uh, so that that's was a awesome. fun time. But I, like, if you exclude that, I ended up finishing the tournament like, like, like a three and one record. And uh, I think it was like a two, six, six goals against average. So, um it, it did okay. Uh, the only problem with the tournament was they didn't they didn't uh, reward playoff positioning based off of your record. They did it based off of the goals for and against. And we, like the, the initial team I was playing for, not the team I subbed in for, we were a plus. I think we were a plus like eighteen, and we still didn't make the playoffs. So there were because of these teams that were blowing other teams out like ten nothing and so on. It was just it was kind of stupid. Uh, and we were also the second oldest team in the in the tournament too, so that was kind of uh, that was, that was age kind of don't a, matter. Well, age don't matter. So age let matter. me ask you. It's all about the heart. So let me ask you. I'm not going to cut you off, yeah. but um, I know we're getting, we're getting up close to time. I really want to ask you, and I want to talk to you because my grandfather, he was Portuguese descent. He was an oil painter. Yeah. Very. He was World War Two vet. He was in. Uh, France. He was in Italy during World War II and he saw some of the museums. He loved art. Now, you're a pretty talented artist and listen, I wish I had your skill. I, I, I'm, 
<laughs> Much love. You are a talented artist. I've seen your artwork on Twitter. Can you just talk yeah. about that real quick? Yeah, so during COVID, um, I ended up actually, like, because I, I worked in telecommunications uh, with uh, Ellis, actually. Um, basically, it's one of the big, big telecoms here in Canada. Um, I actually just got laid off from them, actually, oh, uh, yeah, that. like, a couple months ago, and I just had my last day last Friday. So, Ooh, shit, uh, but ba basically, I was uh, known as what we were called our Samsung ambassadors. So, like, we had, like, these brand ambassadors that promoted, like, you know, different brands, like we'll have our Apple ambassador promote like iPhone products. I was our Samsung guy. Um, so I ended up hey, entering this I'm contest. A Samsung guy too. <laughs> hey, hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I ended up actually um, entering this contest and like, it was just a raffle. So you could win literally anything. So I ended up winning this Galaxy, this high-end Galaxy uh, tab, um, like tablet with the S Pen. So I ended up actually um, just one day to say, I'm like, I'm going to see if I can draw on this thing and see what, like, see what I can do, right? So um, over like, my first thing that I drew was a, was a Carey Price goalie mask. It took a lot of time. <laughs> right. Mind you, I've, I've discovered ways on, like, as you, as you get more comfortable, you, things get a lot easier. Um, and then I start getting, like, I took some time off from that, and then I kind of got back into it. And uh, it, it started taking off. So I started drawing more realistic looking things. And like these things would take me up to like 40 hours to create. A great Jeez, thing to 40 digital. hours? Yeah. If no, no kid, like, if no, like you're looking at every single, like every single, like, like uh, layer of different colors in someone's face and you're, you're, you're drawing it all out. You're, you're coloring it in it it takes, takes a lot of time. And there's different styles you can do. You can do pastel. You can do airbrush. I like to use the airbrush a little bit because airbrush just has like a really cool smooth right. look to it. Right. Uh, so I got into that and then it just started taking off. I ended up actually uh, doing one of um, Montreal's prospect goalie, Caden Primo. And Caden Primo, uh, so I had this guy message me and he's like, hey, I really like your, your artwork. Like how much to buy your Caden Primo? I was like, tomorrow I'll this much or whatever and he's like, all right I'll, I'll take two so I, I printed out two of them for him and uh anyway um he's like so i'm good friends with keith primo and i'm like oh <laughs> that's i'm gonna send this to keith for a birthday present i'm like oh, that's amazing so it was like basically Caden primo and his lavelle rocket um jersey and whatnot so i thought that was pretty cool um i've i've got um actually Give me a second. I'll show you one of my one of my favorite pieces that I did. Let's I got autographed actually. So give me a sec here. I was gonna grab it off the wall. Let's see. Um, it. One of my favorite one of my favorite pieces here is of uh, Brendan Gallagher. With, yes, uh, he's bleeding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's got to be one of my favorite uh, favorite pieces that uh, that I've done. Uh, so got that of Galley. But I love doing goalie masks. Those take a long time just because of all the fine details, the reflections, everything. Right. Um, but they take a long time. Goalie masks, I would say, probably take a little bit longer than you take just on standard face. I always, well, the big thing about artwork is I always start with the eyes. I always start with eyes because I find the eyes is the first thing you're going to look at when you look at, a, at somebody's face and look at their expression. And then you, I work my way out. And then basically Smart. leading on to like, you know, the body and all that. I actually ended up winning an, an award with the Montreal Canadiens actually with the artwork. <laughs> um, no, shit, no shit. I did. Wow. I did. Canadians. I did. Uh, I did, uh, I did a, a piece of Cole Caulfield and uh, I, I entered this contest and I'm like, you know, I didn't hear anything. I remember like, I don't usually use my Gmail that often, but I entered my Gmail by a mistake. So the Habs end up posting this thing online and like of all the, because they said, submit your content. It could be like TikTok, videos, artwork, whatever it may be. So I, I, uh, I see them post this video that they're going to show on the big screen of Bell Center. I'm like, oh, it looks oh, like I didn't shit, win. Really? I'll move on. So I'm watching the video and all of a sudden I see my artwork. I'm like, holy shit. That's me. So I, go, I go back into my inbox and I say, yeah, I see like an email from the Montreal Canadiens saying, hey, Congratulations! You've won. Uh, you, your artwork is going to be on the big screen or whatever. Here's the gift card awesome. for the team store, and here's two tickets for the game. 
so I, uh, yeah, it was just one of those like wow moments. And I don't know if you know that artist there, Dan, um, Dan Keaton's, I think his name is. Uh, he's based out of uh, London. He does all the realistic artwork. He was also another winner in that as well. I'm like, that was just a huge honor to be in that with that guy. He, uh, if you look him up online, his artwork is the best I've ever seen. Uh, all drawn by hand on paper. It's amazing. Who is uh, it again? Uh, Dan, Dan Pete Eaton's, I think it is. Uh, I'll have to send you the link for it. His work yeah, is phenomenal. Um, and then, of course, like, you know, um, I, I've done a lot of nice work with Carrie Price and so on. And, and I've had some requests to do Guy Lafleur and Maurice Richard. Uh, a lot of Hab players, um, of course. Uh, of course. But I've always, I've, I'm actually currently working on Sidney Crosby right now. Uh, one, one player for no, no, so yeah, she can yeah, yeah, I haven't done Crosby yet, which is weird. I've done Ovechkin, um, and, but like overall, like it's just people having requests for me to do stuff. I enjoy doing it. It's like sometimes you step away from it because you're like, man, like this is consuming a lot of my time. Sometimes you just have to take breaks away from mm -hmm. it sometimes, but it could be very soothing too, having the music on and everything and just kind of getting lost in it. Um but one guy I really want to draw is Tuka Rask. I just love that that mask, right? Like that. that mask. So beautiful. Yeah. One day, one day, when, whenever the time is right. I've also done drawings for guys in the in the hockey league I play. And there was one guy who just scored his 50th goal in his 50th game, which was pretty huge. So I, I did something for him there. And um, it, it's honestly, it's, it's a fun time, like just getting getting involved in, in artwork or just any kind of thing that will occupy your time. You're so talented. You're so talented. And it's, you got this talented, you know, you're an artist. But at the same time, like some team goes, yeah, you can be your e-bug. So you must be a good goalie. I've it's, seen your videos on uh, Twitter. Like you're a good goalie. So I'm like, geez, <laughs> I must suck that. <laughs> It's fun. It's honestly a lot of fun. I'm, like I said, for the whole goalie aspect, I'm 100% taught, right? Like self-taught. No, I just yeah. go based off of just watching footage and mm -hmm. trying to watch like mm -hmm. coaching stuff online and do my best. You and, strap the pads uh, on, you stop the puck no matter what. You know what? That's it. Fight Fight to puck. I have gotten hit in the throat a couple times. I did suffer a concussion uh, once mm -hmm. where I took a puck to the, took to the neck where it was just a high riser that just kind of caught me right underneath my guard. And uh, I had the <laughs> That made in Slovakia, <laughs> indented yeah. on my neck, and uh, I ended up actually like going to merge and like, yeah, you suffered. Oh in the shit! Yeah. Oh shit, dude. Yeah, yeah you just gotta be yeah, careful. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's always important to wear your dangler and the neck guards. Always. Uh, but um, no worse feeling. I'm gonna wrap it up right now. Is that all right with you? I love talking to you. Uh, You're a great do. guy, Justin. Thank you so much. No problem, buddy. It's my pleasure. We gotta do this again. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we'll talk. Maybe you know, DM me on um Twitter. We'll talk. Uh, it's been fun. Good, you know, the baby crying right now. So, but no, you're a wealth of knowledge. I'm so grateful that you were jumped on the pod. Thank you so much, Justin. No problem, buddy. My pleasure. All right, go Habs. Right. <laughs> right. Go Habs. Go Bruins. Hey. Go rivalry. Yeah, Bruins. They're out in the first round. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll thank see. you so much again. No worries, buddy. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Peace.